prosecutor to investigate the special prosecutor. My next guest, along with 11 of his colleagues, are calling for an investigation into the Mueller probe, suggesting that the bias runs deep. If Mueller had, had any interest in making sure the public knew this was a just and proper action, he would have gone out of his way to hire people who were not connected to the Clintons, to the Democratic Party. That way, people would know that this is a just and fair action. Congressman Louis Gohmert joins me now. Um, I think a lot of people in our audience understand your frustration. At the same time, does it make sense to call for this before we even know what the outcome is from the original special prosecutor? Yeah. Well, it does, Melissa, for this reason. Uh, it appears that there were potential crimes committed by Rosenstein, by uh, Mueller, by Weissman. They were part of the original Russia uranium investigation. They knew that uh, Russia was attempting illegally to get possession of our uranium. And uh, they even had a, a person inside the operation that was uh, helping them establish a case. But rather than make a case, uh, they squelched everything. and. Uh, that was when Hillary Clinton was trying to get approval uh, and the Council on Foreign Investments for the U.S., CFIUS, mm -hmm. had to give the approval of the sale of our uranium or the sale doesn't go through. And if the sale didn't go through, $145 million doesn't appear in the Clinton Foundation coffers, along with uh, the Clintons being enriched in apparent mm -hmm. other ways. So uh, really, they did the unthinkable and had their informant forced him basically to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And, and that those were people that should have been the last okay. possible people in line to ever investigate anything to do with Russia and the Trump campaign because they had to, to keep the statute of limitations okay, running does, on themselves. But does putting another special prosecutor in place, does that solve that problem? Because, I mean, it's we're kind of proving that you know, by virtue of putting somebody in this position of investigating, yeah. that it doesn't, you know, necessarily have the best right. investigation and the best outcome. It seems like well, compounding that's because, the mistake. It, well, that's because of who was put in place. Rosenstein and Mueller, if they'd had any ethical uh, aspect to them at all, they would have said, Rosenstein would have said, look, you know, I've been uh, going before the uh, the FISA court and agreeing to submit things that were not really were a fraud upon the court. So I'm not a good person to appoint a special counsel. They should never have been. There are potential crimes that had occurred. And unlike uh, investigating the Trump campaign, mm -hmm. where they couldn't really specify a particular crime that may have occurred, there are specific criminal offenses that appear to at least be worth investigating but potential problems. Before we run out of time, cost. I just want to ask you, it doesn't seem like there's anybody who could do the investigation who wouldn't be accused of being political or doesn't have a dog in the fight. I mean, does that person exist that everyone would accept the outcome yeah. of it and not say that they had a vested interest? Well, it would depend on how they set up the committee. The way Mueller set up his office, it was very clear he was on a political witch hunt. He only wanted people that hated Donald Trump, and that's mm -hmm. what he got, people that loved Hillary Clinton and, and uh, hated Donald Trump. So he established right away exactly what he was up to. It was a witch hunt. It was a political okay. hunt. And uh, so, yeah, you can find those people that do vote in elections, but they don't contribute to one side or another. They don't go out and uh, condemn one candidate over another. They've got a clean record and they pursue justice okay. and not just us in the, uh, the Department of Justice. So. We'll see. Congressman, thank you for joining us. We appreciate sure. it. Let me tell you something that I know for a fact. The, this uh, informant, this person that they planted, tried to plant into the campaign and even into the administration, if you believe Axios, He's not the only person that came at the campaign. And the FBI is not the only Obama agency that came at the campaign. I know because they came at me. And I'm looking for clearance from my attorney to reveal this to the public. This is just the beginning. President Trump's former campaign advisor claiming the Obama administration had multiple sources and agencies embedded in the Trump campaign. 
Here now to react is Andy McCarthy. He's National Review contributing editor and former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. These are pretty disturbing charges, Andy. Do you take them seriously? Well, I do take them seriously, David, because my view of it has been from the start that once you know that they went to the FISA court, to me, as, as a former prosecutor who worked on wiretaps and on, with informants, it's a much bigger deal to go to a court to get a warrant than it is to use an informant. Well, it's, it, it, it does look, from what we know now, from what people have told us about uh, the way in which these, these informants or, or agents, whatever you want to call them, were working uh, with suspects, people in the Trump campaign, it looks like people were targeted with the attempt to bait them into saying something about the Russians, even if there was nothing to say about the Russians. Yeah, well, that's a, a pretty common thing with informant cases. That's why in so many of them, you get an entrapment claim, and there's always a big to-do about whether the person was predisposed to, you know, engage in whatever the behavior is that the agents were. Well, from what you've heard so far, do you sense entrapment here? I, I think there's a difference between legal entrapment, which is very difficult to make out, and equitable entrapment, which is when the agents are pushing really hard. But it looks to me, you know, two things to remember about this, David. Number one, this is a counterintelligence investigation. So in theory, they're not trying to make a criminal case. But are they trying to feed them things to get them to, to say that Trump is somehow complicit with Russia? Uh, if that was what they were convinced was the truth, yeah. Uh, agents have been known to do that sort of thing. And then you have the case of, case of Fusion GPS, which was working with this Russian spy, she, a self-admitted Russian spy. They were paid millions of dollars by the Democratic National Committee, and they met Fusion GPS, the, the, the right arm of the, of the smear campaign, of the Hillary campaign, was, was meeting with a Russian spy before and after her meeting with Donald Trump Jr. I mean, that, that just reeks, does it not? Yeah, well, I mean, part of the reason they were meeting before was because they were in they were engaged in a case together. But that doesn't really help them a whole lot because they were working for basically an outfit that's connected to the Kremlin. So they be were. But at the same time, Andy, you know how these groups operate. They try to to, to piggyback uh, one client and another if they if they can. And the fact is, is that I'm sure there was something that they could learn that would help their Hillary campaign work from what this Russian spy was doing with Donald Trump Jr. Yeah, well, I, I think, David, that there's no question that what went on here uh, was politically motivated. I think if you go back to the beginning of the FBI's investigation, where it really got jump-started was when some of these people who had Russian connections like Manafort and Page entered the Trump campaign. I really mm -hmm. think that, that we're going to learn that that was the kicking-off point. And they may have had legitimate concerns about the backgrounds of some of these people, but there's a real political overlay to this. Well, I, I don't like to quote people who I have on as guests, quote their own work. But in this case, uh, you spoke in an article that you wrote for National Review. Well, I'm, to sure, I'm sure it's right then. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll agree with your own words, but I just want to put it up on the screen because it's very salient to what we're talking about. It's all about the question of abuse of power. If, if counterintelligence authorities were exploited to spy on a political campaign in the absence of strong evidence that the political campaign was in a traitorous conspiracy with a hostile foreign power, that would be a major abuse of power. Is there evidence to believe that that abuse of power took place? I, I think it looks right now like an abuse of power. Now, I, I think this is in the end what we're going to end up arguing about, because if there really was strong evidence, it would have been irresponsible for them not to conduct an investigation. But if they don't have strong evidence, they have to know better than to go after a political campaign. It's just... So so the president has ordered uh, a further investigation. We heard about it yesterday afternoon. And the critics say, well, this is political interference in a law enforcement matter. That's not right. To which you say what? I, I say two things. Number one, the president's in charge of the executive branch. And if there was misconduct in the executive branch, it's the president's duty to find out about it. Uh, so they answer to him. Uh, and the other thing here uh, that's very important, David, is this was a counterintelligence investigation. I know I'm like a broken record saying that, but we don't want 
political interference in law enforcement proceedings. It's, it's yeah. true that we don't want the, the politicians deciding who gets indicted. But counter intel's a whole other ballgame. It's ball done for game. the president. It's, it's the, for the president's mission. Right, right. Absolutely. Andrew McCarthy, there's a reason why they call you the best. Good to have you on, sir. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate Thanks, it. David.